Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about disorders involving the sex hormones. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the I button in the upper right hand corner. I appreciate all the contributions I can get uh, to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And if you haven't, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates as I put more and more videos up. All right, so we're going to talk about four different disorders here. One of them is very common. The other three, not so much, but they do come up on exams and they test your underlying knowledge of physiology. So it's good to be aware of them. Remember our, uh, our uh, gonad axis here. If, you, if this is not making sense to you, please go back and watch my physiology video. Uh, you need to have a good basis of understanding uh, to approach these disorders. CAH. Uh, you probably remember this from step one. The most common cause of CAH is a 21-alpha hydroxylase deficiency. There are three major types. This one is the most common. All right, now we have steroid biosynthesis. Remember that this is happening in our adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands are not our major source of sex hormones. However, when there's disorder of the adrenal glands, what we will see is a flooding, particularly in 21 hydroxylase deficiency, which is what we're going to talk about here, we'll see a flooding of sex hormones. Why does that happen? Well, because we have a blockage here and here. That's where 21 alpha hydroxylase works. So what happens then is that you have blockage here, so you're not going to make aldosterone, you're not going to make cortisol. What does that mean? Well, if you have low levels of cortisol, then you're going to have a high level of ACTH because you lose that negative feedback. Consequently, though that ACTH is going to induce this enzyme here. It's a cleavage enzyme that helps you go from cholesterol to pregnenolone. Well, that's great, but we still can't make aldosterone and cortisol. So what's going to happen? All of that stuff is going to be shunted over here. And so we are going to get a metric ton of testosterone. And that is what causes the most salient symptoms in 21 hydroxylase deficiency. All right. Um, so with the low aldosterone and low cortisol, we'll see adrenal hyperplasia as well as salt wasting. And uh, with the high testosterone and estrogen, we'll see virilization in females. All right, so this is pretty much what I just went over. Uh, the symptoms are going to depend on the sex of the child and usually presents in childhood uh, and the time of onset. So if this is very severe and presents early, you can see failure to thrive and recurrent vomiting and lethargy. If it presents a little later, maybe later childhood, you can see a precocious puberty due to the high levels of testosterone and naturally hyperandrogenism. You can also see hyperpigmentation due to increased MSH, and that's due to high levels of ACTH. Um, well, actually, it's due to high levels of CRH, which in induce high levels of ACTH. And one of the things that also goes up is alpha MSH. If this isn't making sense to you, go back to the physiology video. The labs will likely show features of hypoaldosteronism, so hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, and a metabolic alkalosis. Uh, the diagnosis, if this happens in infancy, this can be confused with pyloric stenosis because both of these will cause vomiting. The best initial step is always going to be resuscitation if needed, um, but then at that point, uh, once you make the diagnosis, then you need to, uh, this is going to drive me nuts. Okay, <laughs> once you uh, make the diagnosis, you need to then absolutely replace the, uh, the corticosteroids with hydrocortisone and the mineralocorticoids cor with fluidocortisone. All right, now that being said, this disorder is now often diagnosed in infancy because it's part of the neonatal screening tests. All right, uh, so when we replace the glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids, that is going to fix the high testosterone levels. Why? Because this is going to induce a negative feedback. And the big reason why we're getting that high level of testosterone is because we're ramping up ACTH and we still can't make cortisol and aldosterone, but it's all being shunted to, to testosterone. So this will fix it. 
Girls with CAH, if they have ambiguous genitalia, will likely need surgery. Okay, PCOS. This is idiopathic, so don't worry about the mechanism. Uh, it is one of the most common endocrine disorders in women, as you can see. Uh, the symptoms uh, are, are based on uh, the fact that this is a hormonal problem. So they're often going to present with oligo or amenorrhea, uh, which results in abnormal uterine bleeding and infertility. Uh, they can have hirsutism due to increased testosterone. That can result in male pattern hair loss, as well as acne, and uh, they can also have obesity. This is a very complex disorder. It, there are it, the pathophysiology is extensive. So don't worry about that. What you should know, however, is the classic triad. Virilism, anovulation, which may manifest as infertility, and then on sonogram, which should be uh, one of the first things that you do when you suspect this. If you've got a heavier woman coming in uh, with maybe a little bit of facial hair and she's saying, I can't conceive, you need to do a sonogram. Look at those ovaries. They're very obvious in appearance. Uh, there are other alternative diagnoses that may need to be ruled out just because anovulation has such a wide uh, differential, as does uh, virilism for that matter. Um, so uh, be aware of that. Uh, it's important to know that an ovarian tumor can cause elevated androgens, so be sure to keep that in mind when you do a bimanual. So these are some of your, uh, some of your differentials. Not going to go into these, but... Uh, I did put the ways that you can differentiate. Um, so notice that anytime you have, and this is just some pearls for me, uh, anytime you have a woman coming in saying, I haven't had my period, pregnancy test. That should be a knee jerk. Uh, premature ovarian failure can happen in women under 40. Uh, what we're really going to look for there is the LH and FSH to give you uh, an abnormal uh, elevation. Um, hyper and hypothyroidism should be considered and, uh, certainly a prolactin secreting adenoma. Remember prolactin, uh, ad uh, secreting adenomas will cause a, uh, decrease in GNRH and that's going to lead to low levels of LH and FSH. That's part of your physiology. Go back and watch that if you haven't. Uh, so remember this triad here, that's going to help you on exams, uh, our workup is going to be naturally FSH and LH. Because this can be due to hyper or hypothyroidism, uh, you want to get thyroid function tests, get a testosterone level and a prolactin level. If they have Cushingoid features, you can get a dexamethasone suppression test. Uh, the big thing that we look out for here as far as labs is the elevated LH to FSH ratio, greater than 3 to 1. Put that in your back pocket. This is what normal ovary looks like on a transabdominal ultrasound. And you can see it's just slightly more hypoechoic than the surrounding tissues. Um, with uh, a, a polycystic ovarian syndrome, you'll see multiple cysts, just like the name implies. Normally, you may see one or two of these in a woman, but you shouldn't see that many. So here's more. Uh, the treatment is really just targeted at the symptoms. Lifestyle modifications can be enough. You want to check them out for diabetes. If they have diabetes, put them on metformin. Uh, you can also put them on oral contraceptives that can help with some of the hormonal problems. If she wants to get pregnant, it's clomiphene. You can induce ovulation. Physical symptoms can be treated symptomatically. Facial hair, you can give a flarnithine. Okay, Klinefelters, as you know, this is due to a non-disjunction resulting in an extra X chromosome in a male. Uh, the history is variable. Um, so typically how this is going to present is a, uh, a delayed onset of puberty. However, they can also have osteoporosis, which is unusual in a child. Uh, they also can have an autistic profile, which is unusual. Uh, so look for a delayed puberty. They can have gynecomastia. That's a giveaway in a young boy. They can also have erectile dysfunction if this presents later on. Uh, so physical exam, look for the gynecomastia. These patients tend to be tall for some reason, lanky, long arms, long legs. If you do a testicular exam, they are going to be small for their age. Um, they can also have sparse body hair due to the low testosterone, and they can have a feminine body habitus. So what's going on here um, is that they have a 
lack of F sorry, FSH and LH receptors. So what does that mean? It means they're not going to respond to FSH and LH. And as a consequence, they're going to have high GnRH, high FSH and LH due to the loss of negative feedback, but low testosterone. So we call this a hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. The gonadotropic hormones are high, but it's because of a loss of negative feedback. This is what you may see in a patient. So just notice the feminine body habitus, wide hips, gynecomastia. This guy, you can tell he's pretty dang tall. All right, so this is a before and after. Sometimes it can be pretty subtle. Uh, so the best initial test is going to be to get LH, FSH, and testosterone levels. This is going to be a hypergonadotropic hypogonadism compared to the next thing we're going to talk about. The most accurate test is karyotyping. To treat this, we give testosterone. Now, we want to induce a puberty at an age-appropriate level. So if you diagnose this in an 8-year-old, you can hold off until 12. Uh, gynecomastia is treated surgically. Long term, they need to follow up with an endocrinologist. They are at higher risk for breast cancer. Remember, 1 in 100 breast cancer cases are diagnosed in men. Um, so there will need to be long term follow up. Kalman syndrome. This is classically tested on step one. And the reason is because it's got a classic duet of delayed puberty and anosmia. So you got a 13 year old boy uh, or girl who has not started puberty. Tanner stage one, and they can't smell anything. Kalman syndrome. This can be a variety of genetic inheritance patterns. It can be autosomal recessive, can be autosomal dominant, it can be de novo. It really doesn't follow any particular pattern. Basically, what's happening here is the GnRH releasing neurons do not migrate properly to the hypothalamus. Remember that those develop at the olfactory bulb, so that's where we get the anosmia. It's going to be delayed puberty. That's the classic presentation. You got a patient with delayed puberty, you're off to get an LH, FSH, and testosterone or estradiol level depending on the sex. Uh, the treatment is sex hormone replacement. Again, you're doing this when they're supposed to hit puberty. So to recap, CAH is due to most commonly a 21-alpha hydroxylase deficiency, can present at a variety of ages that will influence the symptoms, uh, also is going to be influenced depending on whether you're dealing with a female or a male. Remember, we need to replace glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids that will induce negative feedback and reduce the sex hormones. PCOS should be suspected in virilized women with infertility. Uh, remember, vir is the Latin word for man. So virilized means man-like. Diagnosis, get an LH, FSH. Uh, the ratio should be more to three to one more than three to one, and a sonogram is gonna be really important too. Sonogram is probably your best next step. Treatment is lifestyle modifications, oral contraceptives, look for diabetes, clomiphene if they wanna get pregnant. Kleinfelter's is an XXY genotype, suspect in a male with a feminine habitus, delayed puberty, learning disability, tall and lanky. Getting LH, FSH, and testosterone, you're gonna have a hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. Karyotyping is most accurate. Treatment is sex hormone replacement at puberty. Kalman syndrome, it's the duet of delayed puberty and anosmia. Uh, this is going to be a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism because the problem here is a lack of GnRH. The treatment, again, here is to induce puberty with either testosterone or estradiol.